Powerful art that sticks with you is usually the result of technical skill and some indefinable thing, a kind of lightning in a bottle that shocks life into an illustration. Jamila Knopf is an independent artist from Germany who seems to have shelves of bottled lightning that she applies to her work, garnering her over 300,000 Instagram followers and counting, and a career doing personal work. In this mini-series, Jamila talks to Bobby about her schoolism class, story-driven illustrations, and her personal techniques for catching lightning over and over again. Hey Jamila, so thank you so much for your time. I want to talk about uh, how you use reference. Now, you talk about this in your schoolism class, story-driven illustrations with yourself, Jamila Knopf. Now, I want to ask though for the audience, can we give them some tips on how to use reference? There's many different ways to work with reference for many different people. In lesson two of your schoolism course, story-driven illustrations. It talks about reference, but I was wondering if you could give us some quick tips that people can apply when it comes to looking for reference, using reference. How do you use it? How do you do it? Yeah, for me, the biggest thing um, is that I'm always on the lookout for reference, really, when I'm browsing Twitter and I see some cool photographs, I just save them and I'm like, oh, I'm going to look at this later for inspiration. And I have a ton of folders and I have them categorized. I have like environments and then there's forests, cities, villages, just uh, in case I need it, you know, whenever I want to draw something, I have a collection that I can browse because when you go to Google and just type in something, you might not get the best results. But when you're constantly, you know, like paying attention and um, saving the stuff that you like, that is your taste, it's really, really good for, you know, getting back to it later. And that's also a thing um, I, you know, earlier I've been doing this thing where I was just saving everything because I like, I'm a fantasy artist. So I'm going to save like pictures of armor and stuff because that's, I thought that was what I was supposed to do. And then later on, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm not going to draw this again. I don't really enjoy it. So I'm just going to, you know, delete it. Obviously, that's different for people who work on commissions and who sometimes draw stuff that they may be not crazy about. But for me, reference is really about uh, being honest with what I like and what I respond to. And even though it might sound kind of esoterical, but I look for like... Uh, a physical reaction when I look at reference when I find an image that really evokes an emotion inside of me I just get this like little spark and like oh wow this is this is something special so I don't know how to explain it it's kind of like if you watched uh, Marie Kondo when she talks about things that bring her joy it's like bling, bling. it's like oh my god this, this is nice this is something I really love so um that's what I do so I always 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 save pictures and um, the second thing I would say is to shoot your own reference if you can. So it's really nice to have stuff on the internet. There are pictures of places that you've never been to and you can still see them through the internet, which is amazing. But uh, when you shoot your own reference, like when you're in a really nice location, you can just determine everything yourself. You can get the right angles that you want. You can just... Uh, wait for the best lighting uh, and just have more control over it and just you know for copyright reasons as well um, when you're using reference you shouldn't be copying images uh, that you find on the internet like all together just take little bits and pieces of information but actually on, on that note when you're when you're finding reference on the internet um are you looking for like the exact exact thing or absolutely not it's no. more of, like for inspiration Correct. Yes. Right. It's it's more like a like a collage. Uh, when I want to paint something, I at least have like five different uh, images that I take information from. So I have this illustration where I painted like a ramen noodle shop, and there are some like air conditioning units in there. So I looked at air conditioning units, and I have a cherry tree. I looked at cherry trees, and I looked at at least ten different shops to get kind of get a feel for the architecture that I could use for like the way it's built so um, you will not find the exact image like that like I'm combining uh, different elements in a new way and I think that's important for reference so uh, 
don't be don't feel like you're limited by it. You don't have to stick to it. It's not like, oh, I found this image. I'm going to paint this image. That's not really what this is about. I think it's more like you have this idea in mind and you find the missing puzzle pieces to make it come to life and to bring it uh, to a point where you can say, oh, this is something new. This hasn't existed before. Like maybe elements of it I've taken from other places, but the way I recombined them, that was my doing. So I think this is really nice. And that's also um, like what, what kind of creates your style as well. Right. Yes. Because when you just copy an image, it's like, yay, I've copied the image. It looks exactly the same. Um, so you haven't really contributed anything to it. So I like looking at photos, but then when I paint them, they don't really look like photos. I sometimes get the comment, yay, this looks so photorealistic. I'm like, no, the colors are like much more vibrant uh, and I like changing it up to make it my own. But and, actually, oh, I, that comment, what it tells me is that your stuff is very believable. That's, that's nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's, that's also a thing I talk about in the course, definitely. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people wonder how does reference and style go together? Because not everyone wants to paint photorealistic, so why do they need uh, photos? But you can simplify them to a crazy amount so that they just reflect your own style, even if it's just like lines and, and flat area. So you can take uh, things from your photos, even though you don't copy them directly. And there's just no way that we know what every single thing on the planet looks like. So we need some guidance if we want to step out of, uh, out of our comfort zone and want to draw something that we've never drawn before. So we just go to reference and we learn about it and deconstruct it and work with it. Fantastic. So for those of you out there, if you didn't listen to the other mini series that we've been doing, definitely check those out because the first couple will talk about idea iteration. And if you already have your idea, now you can apply everything that we're talking about, about reference to those illustrations. And one thing as well, Jamila, that I love that you're saying that came so quick. I just want to bring it up again, just in case anybody didn't really catch it. You talked about painting uh, painting a room that had an air conditioner in there instead of just you know making one out of your head you went to look for actual air conditioners and I'm certain that you would have looked at it looked at pieces that you liked left other pieces alone and yes. what that does of course for so many listeners out there that creates believability because now yes. it's coming from an honest place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in one of the other videos, you're talking a little bit about Miyazaki. Uh, yeah. You know, one of my favorite scenes ever about honesty, about believability, is when in Spirited Away, the little girl puts on her shoes and instead of just putting them on and then... Yes. Right? You know exactly she what... She taps I'm... like her foot, yeah. Yes. Yes, and that is exactly what you get from reference. You get these little bits of honesty, right, yes. that everybody can connect to. And even when I didn't even finish that sentence, you knew what I was getting <laughs> at. That's amazing. So Daddy. That's fantastic. Well, again, thank you so much for these awesome little tidbits. Uh, I hope everybody will try them out, explore, and of course, if you want to take it real seriously, get into Jamila's class, Story Driven Illustrations, on schoolism.com.